Welcome back to Fast Money. The Bitcoin bust continues as the DOJ cracks down on cryptocurrency market manipulation. Or Seema Modi joins us from the New York Stock Exchange with the latest on this. Seema. Melissa, the Justice Department is reportedly launching a criminal probe into whether traders illegally manipulated the price of Bitcoin and other digital currencies using methods like spoofing or flooding the market with fake orders or wash trading when traders buy their own orders, creating the illusion of high demand. This all follows a string of recent regula regulatory crackdowns on crypto, including a coordinated effort by U.S. and Canadian regulators called Operation Crypto Sweep, which has launched 70 investigations into potential crypto shenanigans. And the SEC continues to crack down on ICO scams, launching a fake ICO website to educate and warn investors just last week. The heightened scrutiny also comes as Wall Street appears to be warming up to cryptocurrencies, with Goldman Sachs expected to launch its own crypto trading desk in less than a year. And many market participants I've spoken to say more regulation is actually good for the market as it weeds out the bad players. Michael Morrow, CEO of Genesis Global Trading, says we support government efforts to target bad actors and bring stability to the digital currency marketplace. We believe strongly in eliminating market participants who are not operating lawfully. Bitcoin traded down initially on this report, but since then it has regained lost ground, although worth pointing out still down 40 percent this year. Melissa? All right. Thank you very much, Seema Modi. Our next guest believes the crypto market has been manipulated in the past. Let's bring in Rand Neuner. He is the founder of OnChain Capital and the host of CNBC Africa's Crypto Trader. Rand, welcome back to the show. Good to see you again. Nice to be here. It has been manipulated. I mean, anybody who follows any of the, the crypto Twitter people know that everybody thinks manipulation is going on. You say it has happened, but before, the not now. I think in the past it was easier to manipulate Bitcoin. There were fewer exchanges, there were fewer unramps, fewer off-ramps. It was easy. We also had some tweets exposed the other day about a group who were manipulating small penny, penny uh, tokens, and they got exposed for, for, for manipulating small illiquid tokens. I think today it's a bit more difficult. I think you've got many exchanges, you've got many on-ramps and off-ramps, the volume is much higher, mm -hmm. you've got Asia, you've got the US. So I think today it would be a lot harder to manipulate. In the past, Probably did happen. I, I get that there's so many more exchanges, that there's more liquidity, but there has been market manipulation of things like LIBOR, which is perhaps one of the deepest markets out there in the whole world, and, and banks have colluded to manipulate that. So why not cryptocurrency, especially when, I mean, if U.S. regulators are clamping down here, are we seeing the same sort of regulatory response in terms of price manipulation overseas, like in South Korea, say? Well, I'm confused because the SEC hasn't regulated cryptocurrency and they haven't regulated Bitcoin. So what is the problem of driving the prices up? It's illegal in terms of what act? We're not regulated as an equity, we're not a currency, we're not a commodity. We don't know what we are. So these, these crackdowns are making me a little bit uh, nervous because what are they looking for and under what law are they going to, to penalize people um, for what's going on in the markets? So in terms of the reaction, I mean, Seema had pointed out that initially on this report, we had seen crypto trade lower in general, finish the day sort of higher. It's trading around uh, 7,500 on Bitcoin right now. Should traders actually be more cautious because it is so uncertain what the SEC, what the CFTC, whoever, the DOJ is going to look at? When they come out with regulation, it's going to open the floodgates for new money to come into crypto. Think about a pension fund investor, someone who's investing on behalf of a pension fund, who stands up in front of his investment committee or his board and sure. says, I want to invest in this thing but called crypto. we're not crypto. talking about regulation here. We're just talking about some sort of crackdown. But I give mean, us is, is anybody really, do you feel that people are really talking about putting regulations on the books at this point? I think regulation is imminent. Oh, it's coming. It, but, I mean, do you feel like it's, it's being talked about? That's, that's... Yeah, What's happening I think, right now? I think someone's going to lay down the, the gauntlet and say, okay, this is the regulation, and everyone's going to follow, and hopefully that will be the SEC. Crackdowns, yeah, there will be crackdowns. I encourage the crackdowns. I hope that they can catch the people because we've got to weed out the bad actors. If we have bad actors, it's going to create a lack of trust in this asset class. If we want to make this a real asset class with real people, then let's weed out the bad actors. But the first step is let's legislate first, let's regulate first, so we know what the playing field looks like. And then let's go out and catch the bad actors. So, Rand, because it's been such a speculative frenzy, because of everything we just said, um, how much of do you believe at its soul is, is the crypto world based upon just this speculative fervor where it's, you know, let's face it, it's volatile, anything goes, and that's a great market to trade in. How many of these folks really are, are disciples of the underlying, which I, I, I know you are? 
I think there was a gap last year where the markets were going crazy and we went to an $850 billion market cap and Bitcoin went to $20,000. I think there there was manipulation. I think it's harder now. I think there's eyes everywhere. Everyone's worried about who's watching us. So I think now at a $330 billion market cap, I don't think there's much manipulation going on. Ren, let me ask you, do you imagine a world where we have U.S. regulation and U.S. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency trading and then sort of the free-for-all outside of the U.S.? And what will that, is that where all the flows will go? Or would they come here where the pension funds want to be in a regulated market? How do you envision that changing I, things? I think, unfortunately, or fortunately, a lot of territories are waiting on the SEC. So everyone's kind of looking to the United States and saying, give us guidance. Hmm. We saw the European, the, the G20, we saw the European uh, Parliament all say, look, we're not legislating this thing yet. We're still going to watch this thing. Japan has legislated it. Korea, we hear in June, will come out with positive regulation. Singapore is very favorable. So I think the SEC and the USA have got a big part to play. And I think they're going to call the shots. So let's hope that they act soon. All right. Rand, thanks so much for coming by. Always good to see you. Rand Neuner, um, founder of OnChain Capital and also the host of CNBC Crypto Trader. You should check it out if you haven't already. Dan, yeah, I, I guess the risk is, is that the U.S. is being left behind in this. And to your point, Karen, yeah. that if there's other countries, developed nations, that are actually le legislating and setting up frameworks, I, especially uh, countries like Japan, that we could be left uh, behind. And you can see some of these big exchanges move offshore, that sort of thing. A lot of, of the projects, that, right, but, that depend on tokens, they're right. overseas. Yeah. They're but, not in the United States. Listen yeah. to what Rand just said, and, and, and I'm not bringing back the guests. Um, but, but the bottom line here is, is that think about emerging markets. I'm a guy that's invested in all these places around the world that were opaque and had poor corporate governance and really had poor, poor custody. Um, ultimately, everybody who wanted to trade in those markets did at their own peril. And ultimately, everybody wanted the legitimacy of the U.S. markets. Where institutions can trade freely and be comfortable with it is where everyone is going to go. That's a real market. And so bottom line is, yeah, it, it will take place in other parts of the world. But it, U.S. standards are not going to be left behind if this is ever really a, a, a true foundation for, for money transfer. Yes. Pantanov, he did it. He bought. He went to Olin. Dumpit.